this is if it makes you feel any better this is how the beginning of every single live coding performance goes all right y'all welcome to another episode of learn with jason today on the show we have dan gorlick and we're also trying out a new setup to uh to make everything work better and i'm working the kinks out so uh it, please let me know in the chat if you have any issues hearing things if anything is too loud or too quiet uh dan how you doing today good excited to be here i'm absolutely thrilled to have you here um chat is any y'all can hear dan okay you're not getting doubling echo anything like that just let me know if you're hearing anything weird um so today is an exciting day because, uh, as those of you who know will be familiar with, I am a failed musician. I was a, a touring musician for a long time, tried my hardest, turns out I'm not actually very good at music, uh, but I learned all the things I needed to do to become a developer as part of my musician's journey. Um, but I always try to find ways to bring a little bit of music back into things. You know, I'm still um, a, a big fan of getting into music and, and doing as much as I can with music. I just haven't had uh, any any opportunities to like make music. And so, Dan, you make music. Is it now? Is this professional? Is is this like your full time gig or 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 maybe I should just start by asking the question for folks who aren't familiar. Can you give us a little bit of a kind of a background on, on you and what you do? Yeah, cool. Hi, everybody. I love seeing the messages come in slowly um, on Twitch chat. Um, and thanks for having me, Jason. Um, yeah, I, we talked a little bit about both of our journeys into music. Um, and I'd love to hear more of that as we go on throughout <laughs> the day. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I, I, I've been playing music since a very young age. And I almost went to music school. But then last minute, I took the exit ramp and then went to computer engineering school. Mm. So four years of that um, really had me feel what it was like to not be doing music as much as I was beforehand. So it was actually after graduating, so much of me just wanted to return to making art and exploring music. And I had this question, which was, oh, I spent four years exploring how to make um, software with coding. And is it possible to make music with code? So I started exploring that intersection. And um, yeah, so... Now I do a, many different things. I still make software. I do design things. I do interaction design. I make little musical instruments on websites. Um, I also do performances, making music with code. Um, and I will say I wasn't as much of a performing musician until I started making music with code. And then that was just a way to, um, and for context, I used to play, I still play the cello, but playing classical cello, it's harder to find venues to do that versus making electronic dance music um sure. not necessarily edm but just kind of dancey music electronic upbeat music with code so um making music with code is really something that has brought me back um, and helped me grow my relationship as a musician as an artist mm -hmm. and um yeah and that's why we're talking today is because um, i did a performance and you saw it and yeah yeah absolutely and uh, i see Char just came into the chat. I'm I'm very excited because this is actually the a, a kind of a two-parter episode, sort of, uh, because today we're gonna make some music, and then on Thursday, Char is gonna help us make visualizations for audio, uh, and we're gonna do all of that with code, which I am so excited about. Because you know, from from my standpoint, what I've always struggled with is is when I was a kid. I, I had the ability to go all in on music, you know, and, and I didn't have any responsibilities, bills, anything. So I basically just lived in a van. I had no real possessions outside of a guitar and, and whatever gear I was in the trailer. Um, I lived off of like 60 bucks a month to pay my cell phone bill. I'd go get a job at a Wendy's for a week and then I would, you know, cash that paycheck, pay my cell phone bill, quit the job and then get back on the road and tour. And this was, it was incredible, but that is definitely not a lifestyle that's sustainable. And, you know, when we realized that we weren't going to become a famous band, it was like, okay, I don't really want to continue living in a van. I've been doing this for two years. It's, it's not, this isn't going to scale. Um, mm -hmm. So then when I started getting into like, how do I be an adult who has 
you know, a level of comfort and, and, you know, financial security and these things that started to become more important as I got older, it became less possible to do the musical things that I wanted to do. Um, and it just kind of became this hobby that like, I have all, all this musical gear around me that just very rarely gets touched. And that's, that's a huge bummer for me. So I'm, I'm really excited to hear that that's something that has, you found a way to do it. And, and even more importantly, and what I think is, is really interesting to me about the way that you've approached music is that you're not doing what I've seen some folks do where you live a kind of double life where you've got a day job as a programmer, and then you've got a night job as a musician, you're bridging the two skill sets into something that is unique. It's, it takes advantage of all of your different skill sets, um, and, and produces something that's, that's, you know, yours and like all of yours, not necessarily like the half of you that isn't a programmer. Um, and I think that's really interesting. It, it and it's exciting to me as well, because, you know, I, like I said, I bring, I bring that whole musical part of myself is just stuffed in a closet. And I, I have this fantasy that someday I'll have spare time and be able to make music again. And someday I'll have all the, you know, the bandwidth to figure out how this little drum pad that I bought works, you know, the, like all those little things. So mm-hmm. how did you land there? Like when uh, you, you said that that was when you started to, to do live performances, but as you started getting into the music, how did you learn that this was something that you could even do yeah um and you say do as i guess there's two parts to that and thanks for sharing um your your journey and where you're at right now that's helpful context um and i can definitely relate i think there have been times when i've had um so i don't have a full-time job i work with many different clients on many different projects some of which are music projects some of them are web development rapid prototyping things like that and um when i did have a full-time job and it was 40 hours a week or more um, I did find it harder, and a, a part of me, similar to the Dan that was in um, engineering school, um, a part of me was kind of, I'll, I'll use the word, this is maybe a little bit uh, much, but like I was, I was, I was part of me was like starved um, mm. of not, from not having the outlets to make music. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess um, today we're going to learn practically how to do it. Mm-hmm. So yay exciting for that <laughs> but um i guess time wise how i do it is very much just um yeah i i wouldn't say that making music is my job i, I don't know what my job is but i think it's about just trying to create the circumstances mm. um how can we find the hours in the day how can i make the activation energy as low as possible to just creating how can i make it so oh that little drum machine that's on my desk what does it look like to just have it plugged in all the time? And when I wake up yeah. and I'm brushing my teeth, I can just hit two of the buttons and maybe get a little bit of musical juices flowing. Um, for me, I think I had this aha moment where I was like, oh, I have all these different like electronic synths and drum machines. What if I just left them all on my desk? Always, not always turned on. I want to save electricity, but like, so it's as easy to turn on as possible. Right. Um, and one of the things that we'll explore today is um, making music with code. So just having a laptop. And um, what that felt like was just at a cafe, I could just open up my laptop and start making music on the go. Um, cool. And it seems like we might have some doubling of my voice happening. Yeah, I have I have something going on with my setup where I have, like, I don't know why it's happening, mm, but I'm getting, yeah, why don't you keep on talking and I'm going to, I'm going to look yeah. at my settings one more time and see if I can figure out what was going on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for everybody who's hearing the doubling because I'm not 100% sure where it came from. Uh, I, I mentioned this earlier. I just switched over my setup to be friendlier to recording so that we can do things um, with like turning this into podcasts and, and better highlight reels and, and that sort of stuff. However... It also means that I touched all the buttons and uh, I only have a passing familiarity with how most of these buttons work. So <laughs> I apologize for the uh, the extra noise going on here um, and I will do my best to fix it. Yeah, and during the pandemic also, um, that's when, so live coding is, we'll learn today, it's like a digitally first um, medium. So it really works well for live streams and whatnot. And if you're still hearing my, my voice doubling, then... It is maybe a phaser. It's not a phaser effect. It's just, <laughs> I was trying to figure it out. 
But I will say I learned so many things on every single live stream I did. It was like one new thing didn't go right. Like I had this, I had all the audio from my synth going in the left ear only or some, or things like that. So every time was, was learning one or two new things. Um, so anyways, and what we're doing today, um, Jason's going to be piping audio from super, from title cycles, which is what we're going to be using to make music onto the stream. So I think that's added another layer of complexity for the um, stream as well. Yes. And I think, I think what is happening is I, so for folks who aren't familiar with the way that I run my stream, I, I am on a Zoom call with Dan right now. I have OBS on the same computer, and then I'm also running a Mac that is piped into this computer that I'm piping the sound from, and I'm trying to get all of that into separate tracks as well as the overlay tracks. And the, the challenge that I have is that it's really hard on this computer, at least my with my understanding of Windows, to figure out where sound is coming from. So I actually don't know if the problem is coming from Zoom or from uh, from OBS or or somewhere in between. So I'm going to have to debug this. I have n it was not happening when we tested this yesterday. So I'm I feel like I didn't touch any buttons. <laughs> that seems to be the way it goes. Uh, so I, I will keep uh, I'll keep d digging into this and figure out what's going on. But, uh, you know, here's there's where this is where we are. So <laughs> and it seems like some people are saying it's fine. I don't know. I, I think it's like phasing. Um, the, the nice <laughs> thing is, is that there's no delay. Right. So it just. Sounds like you've got a, a doubler on your voice, which is legible at least. Like we can all we can all understand you, and so it's it's a little bit odd. It definitely sounds like an audio effect. However, we're gonna have to push through because I don't know how to fix it, and I don't want to restart my computer in the middle of a stream. So, <laughs> Here pretty we sure we won't hear it in the music though, and that's really the important part. So, um, so let's talk a little bit more about uh how. I, I'm actually curious too because one of the things that I find most fascinating about this space is as people get into coding, you think of coding as being a very practical pursuit. It's the way that you build software that powers business. It's the way that you make a living. It's the way that you build a website to advertise your services or communicate information about yourself or, or otherwise do something that's like transactional in nature. Mm. However, as I've gotten deeper into code, I found more and more pockets of, of people like you, uh, people like Char that we're going to talk to on Thursday, who are using code as a creative outlet. And we're seeing more of this creative coding or people who call themselves creative technologists or, or whatever uh, label you want to put on it. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just kind of fascinated by this in general because it feels like some doors are opening at least in my mind, I feel like this has probably been true for a long time. I'm starting to realize it, that there are all of these outlets for being a creative using something that may have traditionally felt like in my mind, a, a practical media. Mm -hmm. Um, so when did that door kind of get opened for you? When did you start to think of code as a, a creative outlet? Yeah. Um, Hmm. Great question. And also, I'm. <laughs> I don't hear the phaser effect from I am, but I'll be mindful <laughs> when this is being presented that I will have this cool effect. So I don't know. That adds an an air of mystery or something. But um, I'll try to be as relatable as possible, um, given the voice. Um, yeah. I I think for my my I, I guess maybe let's like zoom out a little bit. And I think it's just how can we use technology to as like a creative outlet. And if we think about software, all software is built with code. And if we think about coding to as a creative outlet, it's kind of like going behind the facade a little bit of software. Um, my introduction to making any art with technology was Microsoft Paint, um, making little, like, I don't even know what the pixel density was, but working with that. Mm -hmm. And I think since then it was just realizing that I could, be creative and explore and have some, I wouldn't, I don't know what my creative expression was with MS Paint, uh, Microsoft Paint, but um, yeah, I think it started there. But as time went on, as I started to understand web dev, and as I started to appreciate the web being uh, natively an interactive medium, um, Mario Paint, 
Um, I'm just reading. I shouldn't read Twitch chat while trying. <laughs> <laughs> Very distracting in a good way, though. Um, but no, um, I think once I started making websites and understanding that the web is intuitively mm. an interactive medium, yeah, I think this happened as I started making more websites. It's like, oh, like this thing that I'm making is is kind of asking for people to interact with it. And once I was able to start making music things on the web, um, that's when I think a lot of kind of doors open for me because this whole history of being a musician, somehow I was able to kind of bridge that to technology. Mm -hmm. um, so when we get to creative coding, I think there's many different ways to do it. And I think similar to like the, the buckets that, um, I don't know, that we can cast on many different things in this world. I, I think that creative coding is, if we zoom out a little bit, it's like, how can I be more of an artist? And how can this, how can I explore being an artist in the medium, which is well, a digital, a digital medium. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that being a creative coder isn't all that different than using something like Procreate on an iPad or um, it's just, and someone who uses like a painting app on the iPad, um, you're not going to be really amazing from the get-go. You have to practice and you have to grow your craft just as you right. do. With and I think one of the really cool things about creative coding is that people are spending the hours doing their 10,000 hours, um, learning how to code, learning how to like navigate a text editor, learning how to Google to find problems, learning how to stack overflow. And so much of this bridges over into making art with code because where one might run into a lot of barriers who hasn't, had this experience hasn't hasn't had the reps learning how to unblock things when something isn't working as the documentation says and learning oh like this is all built by humans nothing mm. is perfect all software is inevitably flawed and um yeah so i think that's something where the the barrier is very low to get started but i think that um for it for for people who have coding experience and i think with title cycles um, for making music with code we'll also see um the barrier is not that high for, for non-coders as well so it's mm. something where yeah so anyways <laughs> maybe i'm getting a little bit too philosophical here but i think that um it's really about the relationship of being an artist and how can we put on our artist hats for a little bit and start to use code as our medium right yeah and i think you you bring up a really good point which is that you know the the most frustrating part about a lot of creative pursuits is um i think Ira Glass put it as your taste outstrips your talent. When when you first start any pursuit, you know what you like. You have a, a sense of what good is for music, but you don't have the the raw ability. You don't have the mechanical ability to make music that you think is good. So it's really discouraging when you you hear a song and you go, "Oh, I can, I have this idea in my head of what a good song would be," and then you go to the actual keyboard and you just can't make your brain make those sounds. Right. You're, you just don't have the ability. You, and so you have to do all this practice and all of this ramping up to get to the point that you you get to just play. You know, I, and I struggle with this on piano. I can make noise on piano. And if I take a lot of time, I can figure out the notes that I want and I can put them together. But it's a it's a labor, you know. But when I code, because I have done so much coding in my life, I can just play. I can sit down at the keyboard and think of what I want and I can just start throwing it together. And I am from idea to some form of prototype very quickly. That yeah. has not traditionally been true with creative endeavors. But what I love is you've kind of found this, uh, I'm not going to call it a hack because I think that's a, that like diminishes the, the impact of it, but you found a, a way that you can just play with something that maybe isn't something that you've put the 10,000 hours into. I don't need to learn piano. I can use the coding that I already know to make some music. And and now I don't have to struggle to get the idea out of my head. I can just sit down and play. Totally. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of um, the inter intersectionality of it, where um, taking this thing that we put a lot of time into and realizing, oh, we can kind of mobilize this in a very different way. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I like to, again, I always like to zoom out and think about like, what is our body of work 
that we're adding to. Am I a software developer or am I a, pro a project manager? It's like, sure, those are two tracks you can move on, or, or what is it, in, in, uh, an IC or a management track as a software mm -hmm. world. It's like, oh, these are two very traditional tracks. And one might think that all of my skills day in and day out are going towards one of those two tracks, but there's many different things we can do in this life and, and ways that we can spend our time. And I think that everything we're doing is adding to our body of work and we can mm. use that in ways that aren't expected. Some of which to make money, sure, but other ways to, for artistic pursuits, um, which can eventually make money as well, um, things like that. So um, yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's maybe a hack, but it's also maybe a, we're reaching back into all of our experiences and able to kind of explore like, oh, how can I be an artist? There's so many of my friends who say they are not artists and then mm. I show them some creative coding tools and then I'm amazed. It's like, oh, one of my friends, um, uh, <laughs> he was sharing his optical illusions book that he has as, as a kid and he realized the impact this had on him after playing with a visual live coding language for so long, uh -huh. realizing, oh, like I didn't know where all of my like taste came from and like the things I'm trying to create. And um, I don't know, it's one of these success stories where um, he's a software engineer full time and then introduced, mm -hmm. I introduced him to this tool called Hydra, which is a way to make um, visuals with JavaScript. And a week later, he was making visuals that, again, I showed him this platform. A week later, he was showing me all of these crazy feedback loop things and things that I had never even thought were possible. So it, it's something where I'm like, how do you do this? He's like, oh, I like read the docs. I like looked at the source code. I saw things that it could do, things that it couldn't. And um, yeah, and, and and this is maybe a little, someone's saying preach, this is maybe a little preachy too, but I, I really do believe, and maybe pandemic has, this is one of my takeaways from the pandemic, and I don't know if we mentioned that on the show or not, but I really think that everyone is an artist at heart, and we all want to see what our self-expression, what our impact can be on the world, mm -hmm. and how we can share that with others, and I'm, I, I'm an artist, I make art in many different ways, um, what we're talking about today is making music with code. And I think that something about choosing the different medium, um, in this case being code, we can see that now art is um, relatable, art is uh, approachable for a lot of folks who maybe didn't see art as approachable. And um, and I can relate, being one of those people who was in software, who, what is it, computer engineering school right. for so long, not seeing what I was learning, not seeing how binary trees or sorting algorithms would ever be a helpful stepping stone to me understanding how to make code on the fly, make music on the fly with code. So no, yeah. I I love it. I think it's it's so interesting too, because you know it goes in many ways. I think that what you said about um, when you talk to people and they say things like, I'm not an artist, right? The the interesting part of this is that it's it's not as cut and dry as like, well, I'm not an artist because I don't own a paintbrush is, is not, that's not a statement that makes sense. It's the same way that, you know, when we argue about whether or not you're a programmer, like, did you build something that, that runs on a computer? You're a programmer. Like, sure, maybe it's, it's HTML, maybe it's C, C sharp, maybe it's, you know, maybe you're down in the byte code. I don't know, but in any of those situations, you're giving a computer instructions and it's making it do something. And it's the same with art. Did you, you know, the people who are doing CSS art, that's art, it's programming and it's art. And people who are making music with code, that's programming and it's art. And you are an artist anytime that you get creative. But I think mm -hmm. the other thing that's interesting is how that works back into your ability to do your job, because you're talking about advancement in these IC tracks or management tracks. And are you becoming a project manager, are you becoming a better coder or any of those things? Well, my time as the front man for a band made me a much better communicator and a much better presenter for helping convince a whole team to go along with an idea or, uh, you know, my, my time learning how to like structure songs helped me think about the arc of a presentation that I'm giving or a, or a story or like the life cycle of somebody who's getting into a new piece of software for onboarding. Each of these skills, they, just because it's creative doesn't mean that it's not going to have a direct translation into something useful in your day job. Mm -hmm. Thinking more laterally and thinking about, you know, getting as many different categories of knowledge under your belt as possible, all of them cross pollinate. That's where the best ideas come from is when, you know, if you, if you look at these really interesting ideas, it's because somebody had a lot of overlapping interests and they found a unique intersection that hadn't been explored before. And they were like, oh, 
I could build that. And then we all go, oh my God, that's such a good idea. I can't believe I didn't think of that. And it's just because somebody was like weird and did all their weird things. And they figured out that all of their weird overlapped in a very unique and useful way. Totally. And again, yeah, I think it's the, I, I think there's something about the, the weirdness, <laughs> like making it relatable and less weird for people. I think there's something like the role is being a translator almost. And it's like, yeah. hey, here's this like really arcane byte code. But look at if we open up an NES and we look at the byte code there, we can mosh it together. We can like mess with it and then we can make art for Super Mario levels. And there's an artist who's done that. <laughs> like, so cool. <laughs> museums like you just have these little crt screens that just have the clouds from mario floating by mm -hmm. and it's like oh someone who has this knowledge i used to find this artist's name but um but yeah I, and i think that's that's something that's really beautiful and and i see some people in the chat are talking about the analytical versus the creative and i think that um it's really important and it's really powerful to be putting energy towards both and, and in my mind the analytical is like the yeah, the, the technical abilities of like learning a piano or the technical abilities of like learning how to look things up on Stack Overflow, things like that. And I, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like both are important. And the, yeah, and it's, it's this journey that I've been on um, and that Shar has also been on and many other people that, that you've been on hosting the show, um, doing something that's kind of intersectional in a way. Um, I think everyone here is the roles that we have as being the translator trying to like oh like i've explored these places and these are the exciting things that i found let me bring them back and share them with everyone and oh, i think i love that yeah i think there's something really important there i so i could i have a million more questions but i i want to make sure we leave enough time to actually see this in action so i'm going to switch us over to uh to desktop view here cool and as we do that Let's uh, let's take a quick second and thank our sponsors. We've got Amanda from White Coat Captioning here with us today doing live captioning. Thank you so much for being here. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, and Auth0, all kicking in to make this show more accessible. You can find those captions and information about the sponsors on the homepage of learnwithjason.dev. We are talking to Dan today, so get, uh, get over on Twitter and uh, give him a follow. And now I have some stuff. I, I started pulling up some additional resources and then I realized that I, I don't know enough about them to ask good questions or even have the right things pulled up. So instead, I am just going to say, where should I start if I want to get into making some music on the web? Yeah, so um, for making music on the web, there's many different ways to do that. Um, we're looking at a tool called Title Cycles today. And um, there are ways that I can inter interact with the web. But um, yes, for looking on the web, let's start with Title Cycles. So titlecycles.org, um, you can see it in the browser there. Um, if people want to follow along, um, you can also install it. And maybe by the end, we can see if you can also make some noises. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's some videos here um, of what some different algorithms look like. Let's do the one in the middle, maybe. Let's okay, now we it. find out if I if I really okay. broke this. Hello. So yeah. um, can everyone hear? Uh, Antonio, also known as Hello Cat Food. Why can't I full screen this? Uh, oh, if you click on the YouTube logo, that did. will that'll oh, bring here it to we you. We did two days yeah. ago, so it's still fairly fresh in our yeah, minds. Maybe let's click um, a little bit. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, I cannot hear this that. though, but um, I'm okay if the viewers can hear this. So melodic. Um, so that's what I did here. Um, oh. And yeah, so, so what, what this is is in the blue code there. So um, and this is like this is um, title cycles. So many years. And I will say this is um, this is Alex McLean Yaksu like, um, typing, and this so really, is Hello I'm Cat Food Antonio um, <laughs> making the visuals. And I think this is actually them talking over um, how they created this. So I can't hear it right now, so I might be talking. Yeah, I don't know. I I had this all working and then it stopped working. I'm. So I'm so confused by what I've done with my audio setup here. It is coming through, and it's it's getting out to uh, to Twitch. Um, the concerning part is that I don't think you'll be able to hear title cycles once it starts, which we had working a minute ago. So what have I done? Um, let me make sure. I think I think I figured out how this worked before. So let me just turn these back on. Oh, I can hear it. Okay. I can hear myself too, but that's okay. Um, that's the part I can't figure out. Because the musicians looking at their screen are not seeing the visuals, which might even be projected behind them. So this is this is really cool, so, yeah. and you know there's a there's a lot of interesting stuff going into here. Um, 
and I can see words that I've seen before, like legato. I, I know that that's a music word. Um, and I can see that we're looking at notes like C7, D8. Uh, those are all notes that I've seen in, uh, like, if I look at a piano or if I see notation on, on things like that. Um, so this is, this is really interesting. Um, so let me stop this and I think I just made more noise. We're just going to pretend that didn't happen. Um, so if anybody wants to watch more of this, you can. And, uh, yeah, so this, this then should give us, yeah, so like there's this... some context at least, right? Like high level, we're going to write some code. It's going to make some noise. Yes. Um, so you have already installed this, but let's walk through what the steps look like to install this. Um, so you can go to documentation and then you see install title on the left. Um, you are on a Mac. Uh, I've done the installation on Mac and Windows both. Um, what it looks like is opening up your terminal and running this script. And um, so we can stay there for a second. You can copy this. Um, you can see what the source code for this is. It's not installing anything bad on your computers. <laughs> um, but what it is installing is a couple of things. And if you scroll down slowly, you can see what is the script doing to my computer. Um, these are the different tools that we'll be looking at today. Some of these might be very familiar to some of you. Some of these might not be familiar at all. Um, the main one is um, super, well, the main one is Title Cycles. Title Cycles is a library built in Haskell. Um, how many people here have worked in Haskell before? We can see in the chat, maybe. Um, it's a domain, uh, was it a DSP? Is that domain-specific language? Domain-specific DSL, domain-specific language? Yeah. Someone in the chat can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody who knows more about computers than me, jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but essentially it's built on top of Haskell. So um, it's Haskell with a few extra mods on it to make it musical. And the text editor that we're going to be using is Atom. So some of you may have used that before. Um, there's a package built in to do this. Um, and then we also have um, Alex McLean in here, whose video we just saw. Hi, Alex. Hi. Um, and um, DSL. Cool. Thanks. And um, so, so Adam is, is going to be here, and we'll be running commands in Adam. And that'll actually be sending them via socket to SuperCollider. So if we go back to the website real quick. Um, here, here's SuperCollider. Yeah. yeah, so SuperCollider is another tool. This is a thing that is separate from title cycles. Um, and I know we're, we're, we're going to come, we're going to bring it back soon. But SuperCollider is this amazing open source sound library that's created by many, many different people, hosted on GitHub. And um, Title Cycles is a way to talk to SuperCollider and to write code in a very terse, very quick way. And for me, um, we have Alex here. Um, so much energy has gone into how can I create music in a very, in as few, as quickly, and how can I actualize ideas as quickly as possible? And that has definitely resonated with me. And that's what's kept me going, kept me learning and exploring. So, um, yeah. So, we have these all installed. This is what the installation script will do for you. Um, some of the things we'll be doing today are going to be only relevant for Mac users. I'll kind of flag those as we're going. Um, Windows, I will say blessings to you all for dealing with Windows audio drivers. Um, it's a little bit easier on Mac, um, but there's a, there's a similar install script for Windows as well. Got it. Yeah. So, and, and when I did this, we had... We did it ahead of time because we were worried about audio drivers. And so when I installed Super Collider, um, I had to change the output rate of my, uh, I had to get into the MIDI here and I Audio. had to change this to 44 one here, mm -hmm. uh, because it was at 48 and that was incompatible with super collider. That was the only thing that I ended up having to change on, on Mac OS though. Um, so it was really straightforward. I know this is a lot of software. It, it might feel a little intimidating, but I just followed the instructions here and um, was able to get up and running and, and all set and, and actually got things kind of running. So uh, once you go through the setup, then uh, I ran one command, which like made a sound to make sure that it worked and I've stopped looking at it. So everything after the setup, Dan is gonna teach us right now. So cool. yeah. I have Super Collider, I have Atom, I've got an empty title project. I'm gonna close this. Yeah, close the welcome guy. And I'm I'm cool. now ready, I think. Yeah, so and what we'll be doing is going through the steps that are documented in the start title. So I just want to click on that for folks who are following along. Um if so start title is right below the install 
yeah, so start title. So we're going through these steps. Um, and the first step is to open up Super Collider, which you've already done. And we're going to run super dirt.start. And since you have many different audio outputs, um, do you have the server file that I sent to you saved anywhere? Yeah, let's see if I can find... How do I get back to my recent files? Is there a... You can go to file, open recent, I believe. Open recent. Yeah. Here's the... Yeah. All right. So I I have a, a handful of utilities here. And so let's see. They're all commented well. So we can start and stop the server. Yes. And um, I will link this in chat as well. Um, but um, I have this on a GitHub gist. And um, what this does is for... 90% of you, you'll just be doing super dirt dirt start. Um, but what 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 we're going to do is make sure it's going to the right audio output. So if you list um, out devices, so I think I can't see what line numbers you have like a different window in the way on my screen. Oh, but, whoops. Oh, that's okay. Uh, let me see if I can. Can I fix that? Not really. No, hang it. That's super <laughs> annoying. Quick. Um, um, let me actually, how about this? I'll make this slightly smaller so that you can see what's going on. <laughs> it work, work smarter, not harder. Um, yeah, so um, let's, let's, so for live coding, why it's called live coding is unlike a Python script that you run, you save like hello world.py, you save that, and then in your terminal, you run um, Python script.py or whatever, or hello, mm -hmm. and that runs the whole file. Um, with live coding, this isn't true for all languages, but with most of them that we that I've worked with, um, you actually run different blocks of text at a time. So it's kind of um, if you've worked with, have you worked with Jupyter Notebooks before or Google Colab before? I'm I'm passingly familiar with with how they work. Um, we did an episode with Anjana Vakil uh, where we played with something like this, which I will just search for real quick. Um, if you want to see how a, a sort of like Jupyter Notebook works, Observable is is like this, where it kind of executes code yeah. in blocks, not as a whole file. Yeah, Observables is awesome. Um, yeah, so let's so let's see what that looks like. Um, here we're not going to hear any sounds. This is just set mm -hmm. up, but we're going to get the fun part soon. So let's run um, line twelve by hitting Shift uh, Enter, and okay. this will. This will list the different out devices. So which one do you want to send the audio to? We want to send it to this one here, which is zero. Cool. So let's So this one? Yeah. So line 15, let's just change the number in there and then from one to zero. And let's just confirm that that's printing the right one. Yep. Yep. Cool. And then now let's run line 18, 19. And I'm ran sure... 18, ran 19. Cool. And then so now we're saying, hey, server, go to these outputs. And now you can do super dirt.start. And if you're watching and you're following along and you've somehow installed everything at the, by this time, or if you're watching the VOD, this is when you can also run super dirt.start. And okay. what we're seeing here is the console output. And we see super dirt listening to title cycles. And then we see on the bottom right, everything is green. Green is good. We're happy. The server's running. So, all right. Good job. So, theoretically speaking, this is kind of the end of, of Super Collider for now. Like we don't in, until we want to change more settings, we we kind of don't need to look at it anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um. Cool. And then what we can do now is go to Adam. Here we and, go. Yeah. And then um, I see that you've already created a file got called test.title. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're following along, you can create another file. Just make sure it has a dot title at the end. Adam does not natively support dot title files but um there is an extension for title cycles um that um makes it do this if you go to yeah and we can see that that was actually installed if we go to preferences or installed packages perfect and we can actually see the title cycles package was installed here and again i should note all of this is open source software maintained by the community maintained by alex and many other folks so um people made the yeah and this is yeah one of the packages Awesome. I'm just grabbing it so I can make sure it goes into the, the show notes. Cool. And then, um, cool. So then this will make sure if you have a dot .title uh, file saved. And then do you mind pushing the window to the right a little bit just for <laughs> that little? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Sorry. So that you can see fine. line numbers. Yeah, thanks. Um, so now let's do the test um, command. So let's write D1 uh, space dollar sign space and then a sound. And then in a string or in quotation marks, let's do BD, the letters. Okay. And then 
cool. And then to run this, you can do the same command as we had in Super Collider. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, Command Enter. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay, and we can everybody can hear that. Let me turn this up. So BD using some deductive reasoning, I'm guessing is short for bass drum. Yes. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So um, yes. So we hear yeah, it's a tump sound. Tump tump. Um, we're gonna get close to dropping the bass. <laughs> step by step. Um, cool. And then we can zoom in a little bit and make the text bigger. Um, I mean, this isn't. This is just yeah. Um, cool. So. It's called title cycles um, because everything runs in cycles. So everything will be starting at the same beat. So that's one of the constraints um, of title cycles that you can also break, you can break that constraint, but it's something that helps everything line up. So in the second line, um, let's do D2 dollar sign sound. And then let's do um, HH space HH. Like that? Yeah, and let's run that. <laughs> and then let's let's put two more HHs in there. So let's put four HHs. And let's run that. All right. Cool. And then now on on D1, let's maybe make two of those happen. So let's make that go twice as fast. Cool. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna run one more. Yes, the HH is for hi hat. Um, so if you do some electric music things, if you worked with like a 808 drum machine, these are the same little, um, what's it? <laughs> I see Jason is bobbing. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh my gosh. Um, cool. I want to also change the global clock. Um, so let's make the whole thing a little bit faster. Okay. So let's, on a new line, let's do set CPS, all one word. Um, yeah, all one word. And then in parentheses, um, we're calling a function. Let's do Oh, function. Got it. Yeah, this is a function. Let's do one. And then just run that. Cool. So, <laughs> so one right. is um, 120 BPM. Or let's say what's what's happening is everything that's in the the string, it's going to play both of those. And then um, it's a musical term called quantizing. It's going to evenly space those out over the course of one second. Right. So does that make sense? Yeah. So then if I wanted to, like, let's say we want to get um, like an offbeat snare, right? We, so we got boom, boom, right? But we, ka, ka, oh, right? Yeah. Like how would, how would you add the space to get it to not hit on the one? Great question. Um, so let's do D3. And so each of these are like audio channels essentially. So D3 dollar sign, let's do sound. And then in, in um, yeah, a string. So the rest is a tilde, so you can do rest. Rest and then, and then snare. Let's do S yeah, SD first. Snare SD drum. snare first. drum. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, how is okay. the sound for everyone? Because this is the audio coming through. Okay. How are levels, everyone? You just realize what is happening. Love it. Lovely. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um. Yeah. Let's keep on going. So another thing we can do actually before we make new lines, let's take the bass drum that's on, on D1 and let's uh -huh. actually just make it, instead of doing two of two of them, let's actually just do bass drum times two. Like that? Um, let's see if that works. Let's run it and see. No. Cool. So yeah, so let's, make, let's get rid of this. Sorry, okay. one more, no spaces. Oh, so it's actually it's actually working now. <laughs> it's just it's just doing the same thing it was doing before. Let's do bass drum times four. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Let's do bass drum one. Yeah, or two. Either way. Um, and then I'll show. You. So I'm just gonna teach you the, the diff, like the different building blocks. So let's do let's surround the two with carrot brackets. You know what those uh, are? Carrot. Wait, sorry. Are they? So we, we have very scientific nomenclature here. We use uh, square boys, round boys, curly boys, and pointy boys. <laughs> oh, we're using the pointy boys. All right, we're looking for pointy boys. Let's put the pointy boys around it. So within All there, right. let's put two space four. 
two, four. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm having so, this is like, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> well, so what we can also do now, um, or yeah, how, yeah. any other questions? I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you guide it. Any other questions as a, things that you want to explore, musical ideas? Yeah, I think that, like this is this is really fun. Like what I like about this is that it's you, you mentioned the word terse, right, as a way of, of describing things. And what I think is fascinating here is that we just like we did exactly what I would have expected to do on a sequencer, mm -hmm. but I didn't need a sequencer. And mm -hmm. and that's really exciting because I could just say like, oh, yeah, I want a hi-hat and I want the hi-hat, you know, just get the hi-hat going. And then, oh, I want the, uh, okay, so so what if we want to add like a fill? Like, uh, you know, we we want just at the, you know, last bar, like, right, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's try that. So let's do hi-hat. Let's do hi-hat times eight. Let's see. Let's see what that sounds like. Oops. Eight. Oh, that's pretty fun. Right. Um, so, yeah. So... In this case, there's a couple ways to do this. So if it's like a drum machine, um, we can write it out. Oh, mm -hmm. let's also teach everyone the most important command for title cycles. Um, this is how you make everything quiet. Okay. Um, so at the bottom, maybe let's, let's um, write out the word hush. Then run that. Cool. That'll party, quiet. That'll party stops. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> DJ record scratch. Um, but yeah, let's um. So and then we can bring back maybe let's just bring back the D one element first, and we'll start there. Cool. Um, someone says, how much can you subdivide? You can make it play like two hundred every second. So you can do lots of crazy things. We're we're starting very constrained. Um, cool. So let's do on D two. Let's type out the four hi hats again. Okay. Rather than having it times eight. And then on the fourth one, let's put that, let's put, what are they, the square boys? This, this, the, <laughs> the square brackets? Yeah, let's put that around the HH. And then let's do HH times two in there. Let's run that. Cool. Ah, I love it. Okay. And, so, oh, and if we wanted to make it like clever, could I do one like this? Where I want only every every other. <laughs> that was my next step. Yeah. Nice. This is so great. I love this. Cool. So um, let's do something with the snare drum now. Let's do it. So um, let's do it. So the snare drum. Well, yeah. What do we want to do? What what kind of fill could we do with the snare drum? Let's go with. Uh, we'll do one of these, and then. What happens when you do a triplet? Oh God, chaos! <laughs> so let's let, no, let's, let's leave, it, leave it as is. Undo, okay. Undo, undo. All right. Let's put after D three do dollar sign slow two. So, so yeah, dollar sign and then slow and then two. And then. Cool. We got there. All right. Okay. How, or or how's that, how is that feeling for you? <laughs> I mean, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's. Well, so now it'll do it. Yeah. So what, what every what fourth. Yeah, no, exactly. Perfect. Um, what else can we do? So I'm going to teach you one more thing that makes this, um, this is a building block that we'll be using. So for DD, um, on line one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm going to go full trap on this. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Maybe on the second HH, let's do it. Let's do let's put that one. We don't actually need the brackets around it. Let's just let's just do times. Let's do the same thing and let's do something with that one too. Okay. Let's do uh yeah, there's brackets. What do you call the pointy boys? Let's do Point something. Fun. Yeah, pointy boys. Oh, let's do it that. Cool. Nice. Um. Cool. And then for D1 now. So let's erase everything after BD. So like the times Q4. We're gonna okay. do a different pattern now. Let's do um parentheses. Or what do you call that? Round round voice? Round boys. And then let's do three comma eight in in the parentheses. And let's like run that. Yeah. 
Oh, so we can pick the downbeat. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so three eight. This is something that's not unique to title cycles, but this is something there's like academic papers on this. And this is something called Euclidean patterns. So what it's doing is rather than so let's let's do a little experiment. So let's copy this line. You can hit Command Shift D to duplicate the line. There you go. And then let's um, let's just do base drum times three in there instead of the instead of these parentheses. And let's run that line. Oh, and you want to have a line break between them, or you can hit Shift Enter. Oh. Oh. Yeah, let's run that. So now we're on triplets, which is cool. It's got a feel, but it's got a feel. it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't resolve. It's like very tense. Yeah. So then we can resolve by running the first line again. So this is a way, so you can put in oh, rhythm. So, oh, okay. So Jacob asked a question a minute ago about how to do different verses. And so because this is live coding, as the DJ, you're building a set and then you're going to move. Okay, so we're here. All right, let's create some tension. Right? Now everybody's like, oh, what's going on? This feels really tense. And then when you're ready to drop the bass, we just go back up here. Oh, I love this. Oh, this is fun. Cool. And I love that, like, We've been doing this, um, we're listening, we're like, it's a relationship with a computer because we're telling the computer what to do, or asking the computer to do certain things, and then we're listening for sonic feedback to see if it's doing that thing. And I think for me, being a musician, that's something that, that feedback is something that's very, keeps me going, and I, I love yeah. that stuff. And we're doing that on Twitch as well. If you're not listening to the audio, and we do have a live captioner here, then not much of this is coming through, so it's something that obviously is not for it. Yeah, but, it's something that I think is like really cool about this. It's it's very cool. And so so uh, to isolate this because Nikki was asking what the difference is. So let's mm -hmm. go with the just this. Right? So this is just on every third beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Like it's very like every third beat. And then this one. Right? It kind of it turns it into an actual repetition that's that feels more like four four time. Uh, so you get a, a, co a cool feel in there. And so when we add everything back in, it's got a little bit more bounce, right? Like this is this is more fun than just straight four on the floor. Yeah. And what you can do also is um, we, we have those little carrot brackets or the um, pointy points. Um, I'll, I'll be able to say it without laughing as we continue. <laughs> um, so on line number one, let's let's do the, the point points around the three. And let's let's try different numbers in there. Let's do uh let's see. Well this is gonna be chaos. Not all that much chaos. Oh, I'm into it. I like it. Yeah. Let's try it. What else, what else do I wanna try? Right? So we and we can just get weird on this, like just keep Exactly. And now it's actually, this is interesting too, because what it, what it's doing is it's like this round could be different from a different round. And so things start to get really interesting and overlapping and you, you remove some of the, the robotic feeling um, by having these like these separate loops that are all layered together. And then I can kind of turn things off and on and I can get in here and let's get like tense and yeah. Right. And like, like this is really fun. Yeah. And we're, it's getting nested. Like we have loops within loops. So I guess I was talking about like how like binary trees and trees. I was like, how is he going to help me? Like this is creating these like logic decision trees for how each loop will be played. Mm -hmm. And you can create a very complex loop that it'll it'll repeat once every like I don't know like hundred times by having enough variations. Right. Um, so yeah. So. Um, uh, the, a couple people have asked about instruments, right? So we've got a we've got a drum kit. Yes. Um, can we can we add a lead? Can we do bass? Like what's totally. how, how do we take this even further? Yeah. So let's um let's hush it and then let's just have let's just simplify and bring one of these uh, one of these in as our clock. So one okay. thing to also keep in mind, and this is with the advent of electronic music, you no longer need to have a band play with you. I will say having like five musicians playing together, you can create things that are way cooler than one person typing things out. That's mm -hmm. just like, I think that's because you can like all breathe together. You can change with the tempo. But I think with the advent of electronic music, it means that one person can do many things.
but it does also mean that you want to be mindful. Like when you do start these little processes, these little sub processes, um, they can get stale. So you just want to not have them running forever, even though you have the power mm -hmm. to start. You also want to have the power. You also want to use the power to stop and like use negative space as well. Sonic right. Space. Um, that's not a title cycles thing. That's just like a Dan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this for a while thing. Um, but yeah. So um, let's maybe play the first one, um, D one, line one. Let's play that, and that'll kind of be our our heartbeat as we explore some instruments. Nice. Cool. So let's start on some new lines, and we uh, we can organize the code however. Um, cool. Let's let's explore. So um, there are different ways to get tonal and like melodic things. Mm -hmm. You can use samples and repitch them, or you can actually synthesize sounds. Um, so do you know what synthesis is? In the broadest strokes, yes, but I, I think uh, for for me to not sound like I'm making stuff up as I go, and for anybody who hasn't heard it, I'd love a, a 101. Cool. So synthesis 101, and I, 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 expo I discovered like hardware synthesizers that make like music synthesis. Um, like audio synthesis, I guess like a year before title cycles, and that was a, sure. I was off to the races after discovering that. Um, but synthesis is creating using, and again, I'm not. This isn't the definition, but it's it's how do we create? So how do we synthesize something? This can be audio. This can be video. Um, this can be anything. What is synthesis definition? I'm actually curious. Uh, the definition. Uh, this is not the technical definition, but it's okay. <laughs> Doesn't Ableton have like a, a synth thing too where they learning oh, synths? Yeah. So oh, yeah. for if you want to do like a real 101 and learn how all this works, you can get in here. But um Yeah. But essentially yeah. what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using Super Collider as our synthesizer. Um and we're using it as an audio synthesizer today. Yeah, we can open it. Um oh so Super Collider has two processes. You click, oh, click I'm them opening the wrong one. Yeah. So we have the server running in the bottom right, and mm -hmm. this is going to be showing what's happening with the audio. You can actually go to, in Super Collider, go to server on the top, and then hit show scope. And then you should see what's happening, what it's actually creating. Cool. And this isn't it synthesizing, this is playing samples. Um, right. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, Super Collider, we actually created these different um, synthesizers in code, and Title Cycles is going to be calling these. So, yes. So that's like broadly in, in the world of creating lots of different digital art. Um, you either go like sample based or synthesis for video art as well. It's like, oh, like what's our what's our base that we're working off of? Is it like an mm -hmm. existing video? Is it existing, existing photo? Or are we actually going to be creating shapes using math? And right. Char will talk about what creating shapes with math looks like um, on Thursday. Um, Cool. So let's go back to Adam and let's explore using a some of the synthesizers. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So and let's do D four dollar sign, and let's say note, and then in a string let's say um, C lowercase C, and then let's say let's actually say C three. Okay. Um, and I'll explain what this is. Um, or C, so so we're using the musical note C, so um, A B C D E F G, and then it wraps around A B C D E F G. Um, an eighty-eight key piano has eighty-eight different keys, um, notes, and every twelve notes it repeats an octave. So um, C three means that you're starting at the bottom and you're going up to the third C. So it's going to be kind of towards the lower end of the piano. Um, so let's also now we're going to see a new symbol. Let's do after C three. Let's um, outside of the string, let's do a uh, hashtag or pound. And let's say sound is going to be super uh, sound, yeah, space, super. And then in a in a string, sorry, um, we're going to say super square. And then, like that. Whenever, yes, and let's run that. Well, that's kind of loud. So let's, let's do after that, let's do hashtag. Uh, after yeah, yeah, and let's say uh, space gain, space zero point eight. Let's run that. Cool. It was loud on my end, but if it's not loud on your guys' end, maybe you make it louder. Yeah, it so was. It, it was pretty loud. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Um, so, so, yeah. So now we hear a note here. So, this is 
asking Super Collider. So if we go back to Super Collider and look at the scope, wherever that is open, yeah, here it is, perfect. Um, that's generating a square wave in addition to the drum beat. Um, mm -hmm. This is not, there's probably, there's much better ways to visualize this. The Ableton one is a great way to see what the different waveforms look like. Um, but <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so now how do we change the notes? So let's, let's after, um, line, af at the end of line nine, let's, let's enter a new line. And then um, let's have it all connected though. So this is just for our organization. Okay. And then hit tab. Haskell does care about the like the white space. Gotcha. Um, let's do plus note. Plus note like that. Yep. And then in a string, let's do two. And let's run that. And you want to do command enter to run that. Well, cool. so what did that do? It it took it up two steps, right? Yep. So if you look at a keyboard, it's just going up two little two two keys. We're counting black keys and white keys. So this is going up two semitones. Got so, it. And then if we did something, or would it be minus note, and then we could go... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, so it takes the, I guess, the sum of all of those. So... Oh, it does the whole thing. I got it. Okay. Yeah. But what are you trying to do? What do you, what do you want to have it do? I was I thought that it was the same as like these where if you if you fired one and then the other it would uh, it would change it. I was gonna have it oscillate between two pieces. Uh huh. Well, let's let's let's. How can you integrate the pointy boys to do that? Where would you put? Uh, them? let's do. Let's see. So I can just set any note, right? So if I wanted to cycle between two notes, I could do like a, a C and then we'll go. What's a do like a e. third so e f g right uh yeah the third would be let's yeah the g would be the fifth let's try that though let's fifth. try it oh eight. right because i'm not counting cool. okay uh, let's let's just let's just comment out the note the plus note two at the end so on line 10 let's just you can do command with a forward slash and then you can just run the whole line again right so we want to make that like four Now we're actually hearing the notes that it's the right, the right. Notes. Right. So we're playing the first and then the fifth. Yep. Cool. And then what we can also do. Yeah. What else? What else do you want to do? I have, I have, I have ways where we can run with this, but I want to, I want you to drive. I mean, I'm kind of at, at this point. I think I don't have quite enough knowledge about what's possible to get creative. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you could do the animated emoji is so good. I love it. Um, <laughs> so how like maybe show uh, maybe show me how to do a little bit of like alternation. Like if we want to get into yeah. some, you know, something a little more uh, audibly interesting than like a straight cycle. Yeah. So this is where I use the plus notation. I like it because it's it's very terse. And you don't actually have to write out the note names, but it does mean you have to go into semitone land. Mm -hmm. So um, let's let's take the G three away for now. Okay. And then let's instead of having plus Q, let's type zero space zero. Like that. And let's let's remove slow four. Let's run that. So okay. Plus, yeah. So plus note, it'll that pattern will then be kind of cast onto note C three. If Alex is here, um, he can he, he can <laughs> explain it with the correct terminology. But when I use this pattern, and these are all different patterns because we're just ways to represent music with like language notation. Mm -hmm. um, but what this pattern is doing is it's bringing this tempo onto C three. So let's type out about four zero. See what that does, and you can see where this is going. Well, and let's also do after gain zero point eight. Let's do hashtag legato zero point five. Let's run that. Okay. So what does that? Yeah, what does that do? So we what we uh, legato is like it, 
Actually, I don't know what legato is. I thought what we just did would be staccato. Oh. But so, I don't actually know enough about the differences to be able to speak yeah. to them. So what legato is doing is, I guess, like, maybe length is a different way to describe it. Like, so, like, the length of it Oh, because be... we just turned it down. So legato yeah. one is just, like, sustain infinitely. Exactly. Got or it. It's, it's, okay, so... Yeah, legato one is take up the whole extent of that beat. Right, right, right. Okay. Oh, so now let's, um, below line 10, let's create a new line. And let's, okay. this is all going to be part of the same thing. Oh, like this? Yeah, exactly. And then do plus note. And then let's put in a string, let's put, uh, three. So we're going to go up a minor third, so it's three half steps. Let's run that. Okay. And then let's go... So this is where, like, my music theory knowledge, like, I know what these half steps what these semitones are um but this might be going over the head of some people so please like draw this back at any point so and i think like hold on i'm gonna get my see if i can yeah. this without <laughs> knocking things over so i have a uh, a keyboard here oh can i show it without... uh -oh. we can also pull up a google image or either way <laughs> we're doing this okay so here right we've got yes. our our piano and so when we hit a key if this yeah. is our zero then if we go up three it would be wait can i do this it would be one two three right yep yeah and that, that's a minor third so, so this if like you played these together they would be in key it would be a chord right yeah. but we're just yep. telling it to to if we started here plus three, one, two, three, and now we've hit this key. Exactly. So that's the, the visual. Yeah, and what we're okay. gonna do is actually, we, we, we can play chords, but let's alternate between them first. Okay. So how do you alternate between the first note and then the, the minor third for every cycle? I'm making a guess like this. Maybe, <laughs> let's see. This let's is gonna be chaos, happens. hold on. I mean, that's cool. See, that's the right. nice thing okay. about that's, that's not quite it, but we would... <laughs> Let's, what about, what if we use the pointy boys? Pointy boys, all right. So we're going to go like this. Let's see. There we go. All right. Cool. I think we're, we're getting there. Um, so this is our baseline. If, if we want to make it alternate not as quickly, we can actually say after the last pointy... Oh, yeah, let's do that. Cool. So five up five half steps is actually the the fourth. So it's confusing, but it's it's actually like the fourth of the. Uh, so the do we want to go up six oh, was, to the fifth? Is that right? Oh, so if you want to go to the the fifth, it'd be seven half steps actually. Nice. We can also do um at the after the pointy bracket the, the closing bracket let's do divided by um three let's do divide by two there we go so now it'll alternate half as slowly or half as quickly um okay so real quick let's now on a new let's add some higher notes and then we can make these ones do some more exciting things um okay. this is pretty exciting as, as we're going um <laughs> And then, so now on D5, let's say, um, note, let's do like a C5. Okay. And then let's do sound, square, let's do all the same things, um, except for like, uh, like super square. And then let's do, so let's, 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 let's do a point five. Yeah, that's fine. And let's do all plus. Right. And now we can do plus note. Let's do zero, 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 zero again to see what this sounds like. Cool. So what we can also do is we can use a low pass filter. This is some synthesis knowledge. We're going to cut away some of the highs. Okay. So let's do um, a hashtag after note plus zero, 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 zero on line 14. Let's do LPF. Let's do like 2,000. So we're going to cut away all the highs. It's not as harsh. Okay. Then we can bring the gain back up to 0 0.08 as well. Cool. So 
So now um, for these notes, let's let's within the note zero 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 zero, let's change some of those around. So let's do. Um, I like using what a triad is is like a zero, three, and the, the first, the third, and the fifth. Sorry. Uh, do it where now? So let's do um, in line fourteen. Let's let's change the first. Let's change the zeros. Let's let's add different notes in there. Okay. So let's add. Let's let's just sprinkle in some threes and sevens and fives, maybe even some ten. This is exactly where I was going to take it. <laughs> nice. And now let's bring in some of the other drums, because we're getting there now. Cool. Let's see what, what we have the hi-hats as well. We do a little trappy. We're getting there. <laughs> How's this feeling? This is fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so let, let's just try doing some different notes and see what happens. And then I want to show. Oh, yeah, keep on going. Let's see this here. Else we can go. 12 is the so octave. You can That's really... Oh, yeah, no. no. Go for it. I like it. Right, so you can just kind of get like chaos. Like, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is using a synthesizer, and um, so we have 15 minutes left. So we're doing the time. Yep, yep. Oh, okay. Let's, 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 explore, let's explore a little bit more how, how we can introduce algorithms into this. Yeah, let's do it. So, what I want to do, we'll keep the code a little organized. Um, oh, thanks. So let's just run line 13 and 14. Let's run that pattern. So command enter. And then after LPF 2000, let's put hashtag room 0.6. It's going to add some echo or some reverb. Let's like make it sound a little bit nicer. Um, OK. So uh, after D5, let's hit enter. And then let's put the note. T5 on a new line. Uh, Sorry. So, so, so after D5 on line 13, let's let's bring note. Let's let's bring that oh, down. Oh, I got it. You want to bring this down? Yeah. Yep. And let's okay. put, yeah. Let's, let's let's say um let's say fast space two. And then we need another dollar sign. Yeah, it's not happy because we need one more dollar sign after that. And what we can also do is fast two. We can actually add the pointy boys, the carrot brackets in there too. So let's 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 make that a string. Let's try. Yeah. So like we have to make all that a string. Like that. Yep. Let's see what happens. Cool. Okay. Let's now let's add another. Um, let's hit enter after that, and let's add another function now. Okay. So that we can do um, sometimes, and then sometimes. Use... Yes. Oh, I just got <laughs> everyone, everyone excited as I am for this. <laughs> so sometimes, half the time, we wanted to do something. Mm. So let's use um, parentheses. Okay. And then let's say plus up. Plus what now? Plus up. Uh, or let's do plus note. Sorry. Um, plus note, and then let's do 12. Like that? Yep. And then let's do another dollar sign after that. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now let's, let's, let's run line number one again, just, just you know, because we're doing this. And let's run line five as well. <laughs> Or, or line five. Oh, line five, right. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, so 
what's happening here? What did we just do? Can you can you walk us through that? So okay, so we just told it to uh, alternatingly play a bar fast and a bar at or a, a bar at two x speed, a bar at one x speed, and mm -hmm. then we have a random generator that takes it up an octave. Mm -hmm. So every sometimes, roughly fifty percent of the time, it'll bounce up an octave. Yeah. Then uh, we take our note that starts at C five, run it through a synth, uh, make it you know adjust level, make it a little more staccato, and then we do some some nonsense in here, cut out the lows, and add a little bit of reverb. Exactly. Yeah. And the nonsense. That's this is the pattern language of title cycles. This is the beauty of it because you can take these different um, melodic ideas and you can yeah. you can say like, hey. This is what's going to represent my idea, and then let's now add some algorithmically add some randomness and some some variation to that. I I am just blown away with how just how much this made the whole thing more interesting, right? Like oh, yeah. little stuff like that. So are there other? So this is this one feels like a superpower. Um, yeah. Are there others that you lean on heavily when you're when you're doing your own performances to get this kind of interest? Yeah. So before we do that, um, do we want to do want to do the MIDI thing and explore that and visualize it? We only have ten minutes, or should we just leave it here? We can. So what was that called? That was called like piano key. Yeah. Go or to dot, dot piano. piano. Yeah. Piano dot com. So this so, is. So if we yeah, if we hush title cycles real quick, we'll bring it in here and we can actually visualize what's happening. All right. So I'm gonna hush. So. Um, so, Dot Piano, you can just play it with your keyboard. Uh, we might not be hearing it right now, though. Oh, there we Coming go. Through. I yeah, I think I, I turned everything down because Super Collider oh, was getting a little aggressive, but... Oh, smart, smart. Cool. So, Dot Piano is a website created by some folks at the Google Creative Lab for... This was created, um, unassociated with them, but for the Cooper Hewitt Museum, um, in New York. And you can just play it like a normal piano but it also accepts MIDI. So you can plug in a MIDI controller like you have and you can play keyboard. Um, and what Tidal Cycles can also do is we can take the pattern we just created and actually send it to this. Yeah, and I'm just, just to, to show everybody what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm like making... <laughs> right? So anything I play shows up on this, this screen, which is very, very cool. Exactly. And it's using piano samples, like really nicely sampled pianos, um, rather than synthesizing them. So real quick, I'm just going to bring us both through this. Let's go to Super Collider and set up the MIDI. Okay. So we did this yesterday already. So on line 31, we're going to initialize a MIDI client. And this is how you can bring title cycles outside of um, Super, Super Collider and not, now use other instruments. So let's scroll down a little bit. Um, oh, back down. to Super Collider. Oh, here. Here we go. And we want to run this right here. So you hit Command Enter anywhere inside the there. Yep. And then oh, wait, don't hide didn't... It, though. Uh, without without going? highlighting it. Oh, I got yeah. you. Nice. Okay. Cool. MIDI out. So yeah. So what this is doing is it's saying it's telling Title Cycles, hey, we now have this new instrument called MIDI, and this is going to actually send this to wherever. So. Um, that website is listening to all MIDI. So let's actually change Super Square. Let's um, let's make that into MIDI. Let's just call. Um, so uh, sorry. In um, oh, Adam. in here. Yeah, we're doing lots of context switches. Let's change that to MIDI, and then let's try running that and see if it works. Oops. <laughs> let's just try running one of them. The it should be. Yep. Cool. And let's uh, you can click on the page to activate the sound. On the click on the um, edge. Cool. Let's also increase the gain um, back to one because the, the gain does listen to that. That's one of the. Cool. Nice. So what's happening? <laughs> does this sound familiar? Yeah. Th I mean, this is so cool. So so now I have. Uh my own setup here, but if I change this to be, let's do one of these, and maybe we'll set this one to be like three or uh, 10 and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
let's 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 simplify this also. So let's let's go back to title cycles. Go back to Adam, and let's let's erase the fast T1. Let's just do a fast one for now, and then let's run that. Cool. So another pattern I use. Let's also let's also go back to title cycles, and also another pattern that I use. So let's let's change sometimes. Um, let's say um, let's sometimes to off. Sometimes off. dot off, or just let's let's replace the word sometimes with the word off, and then if I can spell, <laughs> and then and uh, let's do zero, and then after that let's do zero point two five, like that. Run. Yep. So what that's doing is actually playing the pattern twice. But the second time it's it up an octave and playing it is offsetting the cycle by. So let's comment out that line actually and just see what it sounds like without this. So this is one pattern going. Right. Now let's uncomment and we can add it back. And so, so I don't know. Okay. This part, that's that's what's taking it up an octave. Exactly. So we can do off 24, or sorry, plus note 24. Let's see what that does. Oops. Well, we can also do off zero, and let's, let's just see what that, that's maybe a better way to explain it. So let's do off zero instead of 0 0.25. Well, now we can see something. Yeah, and so it's exactly in lockstep now. Yeah. So that's something I use and because, oh, go ahead. Did the does the point two five like somewhat randomize the notes because they start moving in different directions? Yeah, let's do like off point one. Let's see what that does. You see what's happening? We I I'm not sure what's happening, but I am sure it's jazz. <laughs> so it's taking the note and it's offsetting it just like by a tiny bit. So yeah. point two five offsets it by a quarter of a cycle. So we're taking that, that constraint. Oh, so we're instead of starting on the so like our our main cycle is starting on the one, but the yeah. octave cycle is starting on the two. Exactly. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So it's a very simple concept, and like you can see with code, um, and maybe we can we can hush it real quick um, as we start to wind down. Cool. Um, we can see, like, musically, it creates very um, complex patterns um, harmonically. But with code, it's just one extra line that's added. And what we're mm -hmm. saying is we're going to take, take that melodic string and we're going to duplicate it and then just shift it a little bit out of phase, kind of like my voice this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so those are a lot of different concepts thrown at you. Um, how is this feeling so far? How are you feeling, chat? I'm feeling great. I, I feel like this is the sort of thing that gets me excited because it's the the sort of thing that I can see unlocking some doors that would have been challenging otherwise, where, you know, through through a little bit of experimentation, learning what the patterns are, you can make music that I wouldn't be able to play on a piano. I wouldn't be able to sit down at a drum kit and make that beat but I can mess with some patterns and find something that sounds cool. And, and similarly with the, the synth, I can kind of pick a note and I can pick some, some, some basic patterns and randomize it and just do some stuff that I'm not gonna be able to improvise on an instrument. Um, so that has me feeling really optimistic. And the other thing that I'm interested in is because of what we're doing here with the, the kind of, it's live, there's a lot of, external input, I'm also starting to turn some gears on like, what happens if we were to say, let the chat activate or deactivate certain parts of the loops or, or, you know, somebody could, could mess with like the, the repetition within parameters so that somebody doesn't just put, you know, 256 downbeats, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. we, but like we can set some basic guidelines and suddenly we can do music that's collaborative and people, you know, go in on it or something. And I think that's really, really fun. Um, mm -hmm. Chat, what are you gonna make with this? Like, I, I really want to see some people go and make some music because this is, this is so fun. So, uh, who's let's let's get can we get a W in the chat if you are gonna go and mess with some some coding music? 
And while we're waiting for the chat, I we got uh, there, Shar. All right, um, <laughs> see some folks coming in. I'm I'm so excited. Uh, and while I see some first time chatters, a lot of first time chatters today. Welcome, you, welcome all of you. Thank you for hanging out. Lots of W's in the chat. Um, so let's do this. How about this? We are going to uh, call this a good stopping point because I, otherwise I'm going to go all day. Um, we have had Amanda from White Coat Captioning here with us all day doing the live captioning thing. Thank you very much for that. And that is made possible through the sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. Uh, make sure you head over and follow Dan on Twitter and uh, check the show notes for links to installing Super Collider and Tidal Cycles and all the things that you're going to need to get up and running here. Dan, any other links that you want to make sure people get to before they uh, before we wrap this? Yeah. Um, a good way to follow what's happening. Um, so Live Code NYC is a collective that Shar and I are both part of. You can go to livecode.nyc.com or no, sorry, it's livecode.nyc. NYC. Uh, and just enter. And this is an artist collective in New York. And this is what got me started. Um, we nice. have a Discord here. Um, this is one of the ways that the community grows. Um, there's also a community in SF called AV Club SF that I'm helping run. Um, there's just an Instagram link for that. I'll, I'll share that in the Discord. Um, yeah, I don't think we have any. Anyways, that's probably not is one of this one. Here. Oh yeah, there's a Twitter. Oh cool, nice. All right, here's a there's a there's a, a bit. Somewhere to, yeah. to lead in if you want to get into this in the San Francisco area. Um, yeah, so York, um, Live Code NYC is a great community. The Discord is obviously global for all of these, um, and then we have Discords for both. Um, and there's great. also, great. for title cycles, there's club.titlecycles.org. And this is um, Alex's, Alex McLean, his course that he started to teach title cycles. It's free. Um, all of the videos are online. So let me put great. that in the chat here. Um, oh, you already put it. Amazing. Thanks. Thanks, Char, for putting AV Club SF. Um, but yeah, I would say what keep, what keeps me going is, again, we talked about, like, how am I making money from this thing? And it's like it's technology companies, um, people who are interested in creative code are interested in this because of the all of the implicit ways that mm -hmm. this helps um, in what we do day in, day out. But also what keeps me going is just finding more circumstances to perform, circumstances to share work. And I think that all comes from community. And I think that what you're doing here, Jason, is amazing. You're fostering a Twitch community um, twice a week or every week coming together. And it takes a lot of work. And also it's just honestly having an outlet for people to share work and have a discourse, I think is so, so Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and thank you so much for hanging out. Chat, if you want to do more of this, Make sure you go and follow Dan on Twitter and uh, come back later this week because we are going to have Char and we're going to do visualization. So we're going to get some music and, and make that happen. Uh, and then we're going to do a whole lot more. So make sure you go and check that schedule. Mark your calendar. You can get it on Google Calendar. You can follow on Twitch, all of those things. Um, and by Thursday, I'm going to fix the problem with audio phasing. Thank you all for, for putting up with some audio glitches as we go. Uh, Dan, especially you, because I know you had to listen to your own echo all day today. I, I appreciate you uh, trooping through that for me. With that, we're going to call this one a win, y'all. Dan, thank you so much for spending some time. Chat, thank you for hanging out. As always, we are going to go and raid some Antics Dev. So uh, thank you all very much, and we will see you all next time. Take care, everyone.